Today, ladies and gentlemen, and to address the issue of uh, voter apathy. I'm looking at an, art at an article that was in the newspaper. Young people are quoted as saying they do not even bother to participate in elections. They don't register to vote because they do not trust politicians. Now we have uh, honorable gentlemen who are standing for elections. They are politicians and they'll give you an opportunity to ask them questions so that we get to the root of the problem. Are you justified to say you don't vote because you don't trust politicians? Or are you hiding behind that uh, simplistic view? So we'll straight away go to the issue and ask uh, Sibili to present your questions to the honorable, uh, to distinguished politicians who are before you. Sibili. Like many young people, I have registered to vote because it's my democratic right. So I didn't decide. I didn't decide which 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 party to vote for. So I'm asking you here to make me make my choice. Okay, I'll start. I come from the BCP, and uh, I will advise you to vote for the BCP because. Um, we have, in our manifesto, uh, outlined how we are going to help young people like you. Um, we have a, a campaign message called "Get uh, Bring Back Our Jobs. Because we believe a lot of young people are not working because the BDP government has taken those jobs that were supposed to be uh, done by you guys to other countries. For example, we have a salt mine uh, next to, in a constituency next to mine. And uh, we have a regular land that takes that salt all the way to Africa. Okay. What we did is we followed that regular line. Okay. Yes. I'm sure I didn't say this in the beginning. We must try to make our messages as brief as we can. I'm sure you are all aware that we have only one hour and we have about eight young people. They all want to ask a question. And the second thing, say your name. You said your party, you didn't say your name. Okay. Thank you, Raitu. But make your answers very brief. Mm -hmm. I'm standing for BCP and Shasha West. And basically, I was talking about bringing back our jobs. We're going to bring back jobs that the BTP government has taken outside the country so that we can find jobs. Okay. Thank you. Um, shall we have another question? No, I think well, I suppose we have to respond. Oh, they, they must all respond. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my name is Milton. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the vice president of the BMD, obviously, which is a component of the umbrella for democratic change and um, yeah I think the umbrella for democratic change is the way to go right now uh, because our message is very clear give us a vote will ensure that we align the education of this country to the needs of the economy we'll make sure that you don't go to school for nothing we we'll go to school so that when you graduate you get a job we are going to ensure that we use our local materials, we are going to use our natural resources to create employment, and we are also going to ensure that, you know, um, young people of this country get responsibilities, get jobs, and get almost everything that can make them responsible parents in the near future. And we will make sure that young people of this country get plots within 36 months Thank so that they can start off. Thank you. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, my name is Ignatius Moswan. I represent the Botswana Democratic Party. Well, now I'll ask you to vote for the Botswana Democratic Party because we are able to create jobs for the past 48 years. We have built a very strong economy, which you can see by yourselves. We've built schools, we've built everything that a youth can need in Botswana. So, BTP has a good track record of developing and creating jobs for Botswana. So I will, I will ask you to simply take BDP as a serious party because of its proven record. And uh, that on its own speaks volumes. If you go to the University of Botswana, a lot of students who are sponsored, ABM College, a lot of students, are, we are preparing them for any uh, uh, available opportunity that may come in the future. Unfortunately, we are having a recession, but BDP 
is the only party that you can vote for. Thank you, Ramoshani. Um, my name is Mkabezi Daniel. I'm from Shasha West constituency. So, now that I have a right to worry, we're on top. It's an independent candidate. Because uh, our one the independent candidate is the way this is the region of the Lima We felt well, maybe the parties are not enough, opposition is not enough uh, to challenge the strategy of the debate to work in the European party because Hali Berik is so silent. That is not very very high. But now it's up to the home. If you are going to create jobs, more for the one of Berika, say you did that in the same on a hair, and it's Berika, you'll take care of your parents. Then, once you take care of your parents, then your parents have a drug before we believe. Then, another thing is plots. You guys, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Thank you very much. And it means no one would vote. Simply because we do not trust the politicians. You keep making promises, but you cannot fulfill them. Why should we trust you? Okay. Um, first, excuse me. Lord, would you be nice to say, like this promise was made and it was not fulfilled? Or should we just leave it at that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I should say the BDP has been running the country for the past four years. So they have made promises, they haven't kept that. So you shouldn't uh, blame the opposition parties. Give us a chance. We say give us, with the FDBCP, we say give us five years. All the promises that we have made in our manifesto, we will, we will deliver. Well, I, I obviously agree with you that there are so many promises that have been made by the ruling party. Even the president himself made so many promises at the beginning of the 10th parliament, where he promised that he was going to uh, implement the talent purchase scheme where he promised that he was going to pay the players of the Super League and stuff like that. So many promises and none of those have been fulfilled. And therefore, I don't blame you for not trusting politicians, but all I can say is that the umbrella for democratic change is here to deliver what we promise you in our manifesto. Because we are very honest people with a proven track record of honesty. And therefore, I believe that Give us your, you give us your votes, you are short of success. Well, the BDP has delivered and fulfilled its promises in the past. In the beginning, we had University of Botswana as the only institution and a few others. And we promised that we will increase those. We brought in Lincoln Queen University. We brought in uh, Boto College. We brought in a lot of other uh, institutions which has increased the intake of uh, students who want to go for tertiary education, those are delivered promises. And as we speak today, we are not only going to be looking at those which have already been established, we are looking for more. The only problem is the recession. And I tell you that you should trust the BDP because we are continuing to increase the number of students who are going for tertiary and university and we will look after those people as we have promised. We've been giving them allowances and we have never changed anything. We are saying to them, just carry on until the recession is over. But we have delivered on those promises. As you can see, other institutions which are existing in Botswana, which were not, not there before. All those private colleges are sponsored by VDP. Thank you. Uh, I think I will not allow you to correct some. At the end. In the end. In the end. There are a little number of water for it. Now the independent candidates. But since the bar, Bali Bans were legally in party, now we are over over thirty-five now. Make my cover, but I wanna put the parties are not doing enough, especially the ruling party. So Runa, kill independent candidate, get over it, manifest one go ahead. Well made in Korea. Wow, 
Et well, recently, a well-known MP was caught in a compromising situation. In response to that political scandal, when another MP was asked whether that MP should resign, he said, no, he's a minister of politics, not a minister of religion. My question now is, should their private life be separated from their public life, and why? Okay, I think uh, what I would say is, as a politician, you are a public figure. So there's no, you are a role model to people. So there's no way you can separate your private life from your, your, your public life. Because young people look up to us as, a, as politicians. Because there are only 57 MPs, 57 MPs in, in the country. So that means there are only a few people that can, that people look up to. And if we do bad things, we influence young people to do the same. If we, we do drugs, Young people can follow, can, can, can follow us. We, we do alcohol, like, irresponsibly, it, it's not good. So for me, I think uh, politicians should be brought uh, to task for whatever they do in private. Um, um, I think in this country, I have so many followers. I can't even remember how many people are following me privately and also publicly. And therefore, this goes on to show you how uh, you know, people take me seriously. Uh, and therefore, I think you can never separate my life, my private life, from my public life. Whatever I do in public, uh, I should know uh, that it will, it will lead to some people copying uh, whatever I do. If I do things privately, I should also know that if these things come out, they shouldn't embarrass me or my followers. And therefore, I agree, politicians must behave the way which will impress uh, the nation. Because if they, do, if they don't do that, um, then obviously, they will mislead young people who are following them. So, yeah, I agree or obviously, our lives can never be kept private. Uh, they will always remain public because they are public. Mm -hmm. um, Let's hear your take on them, Swami. 24 7 politicians have to act responsibly. There is no room for any stupid mistakes. Sorry to use that word, but let me put it that way. So I agree that they shouldn't ever try to cross the line. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Yes, uh, I do. Because Thank you. We will now go on to prove you that you go into politics to line your own pocket. So what can you say to them to to end this perception? Um, I, for one, was working for an international company, an American company, making a lot of money. But because I had interest to see the improvement in the lives of the people that I work with, I took a, if I, I, I win and I become an MP, I'll take a, a pay cut, a serious pay cut. So there is no money in politics, especially in Botswana. Because if you compare a Botswana, a Botswana MP to a South African MP, South African MPs make up to 80,000 pounds per month. Uh, th th this gentleman, they make like, is it based on 60,000, which is really nothing because you are expected to go to the constituency almost every time. You are, you, are, you are expected to, if you, you don't attend funerals for a month, you will say, I'm parliament donor. So that is an expense that the government doesn't pay for. As an, as an MP, when you address the meetings, the government doesn't pay you for fuel. So it's, it's, it's sort of public service. You don't really benefit much, much from that. 
Okay, let's hear what Yeah, I suppose it depends. There are some politicians who actually take that as a job, and there are those politicians who think they have something to offer to the nation. Um, a lot of us, especially young people, uh, join politics because we want to help, because we want to offer a service to the community. And most of the people that we know, uh, join politics simply because they don't have anything to do. Um, some of us, we, we, we resigned from uh, companies or multinationals which were paying us handsomely. Uh, we settled for not even half of what we were earning uh, when we were still employed. But nonetheless, we continued to serve the nation. But I agree with you, there are those who are unemployed even today. They are seeking political office. Uh, for purposes of indulging themselves and for purposes of ensuring that they have something to uh, to, to to butter their bread. Well, I agree with the young lady here. Most politicians go there to feed their own stomach. Why I'm saying this is because they are failing a simple thing of delivering the services to the people. When they ask for political office, they make promises. But when they reach them, they talk of a different they talk a different language. Whereby they will say, I am not the ruling party. Those who are in the ruling party, they will say, No, there is a recession whatsoever. And now I agree because like we make promises to the people, we must deliver. No excuses. Thank you very much. So many of pay pockets is uh, a possibility. Personally, I agree with her because that's why I have opened one community development organization to help the young people and the old people that to assist them for the past five years. So I believe that politicians want to feed their own stomach because they're supposed to do that. They have offices, they've got everything, but they do nothing. Okay. Only to criticize without offering an alternative. Thank you. All right, we shall hear what uh, the manager said. I, uh, I do agree with her because of how can you Okay. Okay, thank you. Next. Um, last week Friday, the NYC was to stage a rally at the Francisco Stadium to sensitize young people about voting. But as the that attraction, they invited V, who is a well-known BEP spokesperson. Like, um, national institu institutions, shouldn't they be impartial? Like, shouldn't they be, shouldn't they be advising us on how to vote, not who to vote? Thank you. V is a musician first. He is a young person. He has a large following among young people. So I think BNYC uh, made a, a good decision because to, to invite him. He's not standing for political position. Almost everyone has a party. So if you take, let's say, Chamagia, he's always she's always uh, attending BCP rallies. So I think uh, I would say they were not wrong to do that. Uh, they shouldn't, that mess, uh, the message that comes to you shouldn't be that. Like, they are attending a BNYC the concert, that means they, they are indirectly involved in the BTP. Because I don't think he was performing, they were in BTP or, or even chanting their slogans. Mm, I think the young lady is saying, shouldn't the organizers have, have some emotional intelligence to say, Seeing that this guy is a well-known, can't carry member of such a party, shouldn't they be sensitive and say, because we are addressing national issues, we'll go out of our way to identify an obscure character whose political affiliation is not real. I think that is uh, the concern of the young people. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree to a certain extent. Yes. But Botswana is a very small market. So you find that there are very few uh, well-known artists that can attract people to rallies, and we find that almost all of those well-known people have already uh, identified themselves with, with different parties. So it will be difficult to get 
you can you cannot just go to the village and get somebody and expect to fill the stadium. So there's a very thin balancing act. And because their main concern is to get the message to you, so they will want you to come there. No, I would say that uh, you know, over over the years, BNYC has always been viewed as a training ground for BDP operatives. You probably know that a good number of former CEOs of BNYC were members, cut members of the BDP, who ultimately assumed political office. Now, it is very clear that even um, their selection um, was biased. Um, and, 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 and therefore, that is why we have always said as, 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 as politicians that the best that we can do for this republic is to ensure that IEC is empowered financially for it to um, conduct what we call political education extensively to both the young and the old. And we also said that it is high time that we, we, we adopt some political reforms such as political party funding, because if political party funding is done, then different political organizations will be in a position to educate young people about the importance of voting. Thank you, Mr. is the name of the company. And for the past 15 years, the young star has shown a lot of success. And he's a serious crowd puller. You cannot ignore a V when coming to issues like this. You will remember he was also part of the AIDS awareness uh, campaign, where he did a very good job. So BNYC, I don't think they were wrong to choose him. I'm not trying to defend him because he's a BDP. But other uh, artists were also wrong to to come and do the job. There were more than 20 of them. So now I take it that uh, it's a wrong perception to think that B was uh, taken because he's a BDP. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think the decision was biased and that's corruption. So I think they should have opened up to other musicians because B is already up there. What about this? Is the, the coming ones? What about all I am if they are not invited? Thank you, Mother. So we are moving on to, to hear what Horata has to say. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> I have a friend who finished his degree a year ago, and I'm about to finish my degree soon. And I don't want to spend almost for two years looking for a job. What are we to do to people like us? Yeah. When I started, uh, I talked about doing with our jobs. We believe that a lot of jobs that you are supposed to be doing or your friends are supposed to be doing are taken outside the country. And as the BCP, we are going to bring back the jobs. Uh, like I gave an example of Solar Ash that is taken to South Africa to pay much, meet, uh, thousands of jobs for South Africans. We have uh, animal skins that are taken to Italy to buy, to, to make shoes that we could be making here. So we believe that uh, if you vote for the BCP, we will bring back the jobs. Yeah, you know, um, it's simple. Give us your vote as young people of this country. We will definitely give you jobs. Well, the, the starting point right, right now is the government of this republic has actually adopted a policy called the early exit policy where when you reach the age of 45, you are told to retire. Now, that particular policy is actually chugging out 4,000 people every year and it will run for the next 10 years. Which means for the next 10 years, we are going to be losing, or we are going to lose 40,000 public servants. And their positions are not filled up because the government is saying IMF is complaining about the wage bill. But the government knows very well that as a country, we are affording that particular wage bill. And therefore, give us a vote, we will stop that policy and make sure that we employ, we employ young people and actually give programs to those who are supposed to retire to motivate them to retire so that young people can actually take those positions and start working because we don't believe that uh, as young people we can tell you go ahead and start your own business. We believe you need to start in formal employment first before you can think of business. Um, the BDP will 
continue to, to increase job opportunities. What I can tell you today is that now I want to encourage young people to stop this thinking of expecting things to happen. I want them to make things happen themselves. Why? Because we have made an enabling environment for them to start jobs, to start employing others. Like for instance, we have the 450,000 pula that is offered for a group of five young people who wants to start, to start a business. We have 100,000 pula that is for one or two who wants to start a small business. We also have young farmers. And I'm sure these young people, if they are advised properly, they can perform miracles in this country. We shouldn't just say, no, government must do this. Let's tell them that the money is available at different levels, at different departments, where they can start working for themselves, starting new businesses. And that will be the right way to go. Let's stop this thing of thinking that, or expecting things to happen. Let's do them ourselves. Thank you. Right, so? Thank you much. Uh, now I think Kotak is the similar manner because the way things are done these days. Because you are working for the government today, tomorrow you retire, you get your benefits, tomorrow you are going to be happy, go for men. For instance, there are some organizations, some say it's a security in this country, you see. But I tell you, come so, come tell you, come so. Will go, but go this guy. I was a soldier before, but I was not going to be a soldier. So, he applied, he got the advert, was there, he began to train again. Then I could talk about as a soldier. Do you still remember the question? Yeah, no, I, I remember. He says, What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, I'll go with what I'm going to do. Yes. So, now, you can see, 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 you So, now, you can see, 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 I've never seen an advert, but get get to a woman. It's our girl, our woman. Get the people get home from there. Get to the people. Can't you hear what we're saying? Get to the people. We're going to go into the employment policy. Yes, yes, employment policy. We are now. Kimela. Okay. Uh, this is my question. Okay. My sibling is a domestic worker, earning 400 pula per month. Yet the minimum labor is 800 pula. Now, what are we going to do for people in a compromising situation like her who are being underpaid? Um, as, as the BCP, we have stated in our manifesto that we are going to get rid of this minimum wage thing. We are going to have what we call a living wage because we are going to look at the standard of living. Um, before we, we can say somebody, the, the minimum money we can pay somebody is this, this much. We have to look at the, the cost of living. And we believe that even at, at this stage, somebody earning 400 pula while the minimum is 800 pula, uh, that is illegal. So you should, uh, you as a young person who is a little bit enlightened, should go to the labor. Uh, uh, department, they should be able to address that because if, if, if the government puts a minimum wage, that means anybody who pays below that should be taken to task. Yes, um, obviously, uh, we, we also have we don't have a minimum wage in our manifesto. We talk about the living, the, um, the living wage because we believe that that is the way to go, but that but we don't we don't stop there. We also say that. You know, on top of that, we, 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 we are interested in coming up with, with what is called the unemployment benefit. So that even those who are not employed, because we know part of the government mandate is actually to provide employment to its own people. And therefore, if within the period that uh, we'll still be trying to fix up the economy, we realize that people need to be given some benefit, we definitely would look at that and ensure that they are given an unemployment benefit so that they can live. So we are promising the living wage, but we are also promising an unemployment benefit so that we don't have uh, people dying of hunger. Right. Um, now, 
BDP does not condone any situation where the people are underpaid. And if that happens, it must be reported to the Labour Department. And if it continues, it must be taken to the industrial court. And I say to you, whenever that situation arises, we must stand up against it as part one. Well, now, as far as I'm concerned, the economy of this country can only carry a certain amount of uh, work. Like say, for example, if we are saying our minimum wage rate is this much, obviously everybody knows that that is what the government can afford for that particular period. And I will support, and I've always proposed in council that all employees should be paid above 2.5 the least. But uh, I was not supported by anybody during that time when I was a council because I feel that if I go and buy a grocery for 500 pula, why should I want someone to get 500 pula as a salary? So I'm against it myself. So I want to be voted because I am going to be uh, pushing very hard for the rights of workers in Botswana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now I think Mrs. Uh, Ibi is totally against the law of the Rumula of Joanna. I don't think when I look at our state of Sahara, you can listen to Amara from my belief for it, what you worth uh, supposed to be equivalent of what you are in. Because now, if I care one of the honorable politicians had said they would like to summarize, but before I do that, you talked, I think most of you, the campaigning candidates, you talked of giving back to the community, but then, mm, should I, I'm one of the youth there, should I vote you in with, based on the promise, or what are you currently kind of doing for the members of your party? Are they benefiting anything from being members, or are you waiting to be an MP so that the community can benefit from you? Um, I'll take that. Okay. Like, I'm an aspiring MP. I want to be given an opportunity to serve the people. Currently, like, I'm just like you. I'm maybe we're the same, and you'll be on, around the same time. So, I have the same level of economy as you, you do. So, I can't say I'm giving people this, I'm giving people that. I want to be voted in so that I can bring policies that can benefit the people. I, there's nothing that I can say here. I'm building schools, I'm building hospitals, because I'll be like, or you say you get a to organization, you spend time with this organization, you spend how much hours, I mean such small things, what are you giving back to the community? Nothing. Um, right now there's nothing that I'm doing uh, around the question that you're asking. But before, I, I, there was one time when I I organized a petition to the Minister of Land and Housing that had more than 50,000 young, uh, young, young Botswana and other people signing because we, I was concerned, when I came to France, I couldn't afford a house. And I was working as an engineer and my wife was a lawyer and we couldn't afford to get a house. So I was so surprised that people are just staying in low-income areas and they're not making noise. So I organized a petition and we, we went as far as addressing uh, the parliamentary portfolio committee on media and culture. So I think that was, and some of the things that we raised in our petition are being implemented separately because the BDP government says they don't want to give us line up. Because if they acknowledge that we are taking this from this expedition and putting, uh, implementing it, then we will get the limelight. Yeah, prior to my election as a member of parliament for the France <coughs> and South constituency, I had proposed when I was still a member of the BDP that um, we come up with a burial insurance scheme. And at the time, you know, the BDP turned me down, uh, but I wanted to do that as my initiative. So they turned me down, they said I shouldn't go ahead with that kind of policy until I was elected member of parliament and then uh, fired from the BDP and that's how I then started working on this thing. 
and today as we speak, members of my constituency are under a package called the Francis Town South Media Society, where all of them are covered or have an insurance policy that is covering all of them so that when they die, they can be they can be assisted by the undertaker without having to do anything. Right now, on my own, I'm waiting on a medical lead uh, proposal uh, because come next week after winning the elections, which I will do, um, I will then start a medical lead for the poor because I believe that you don't have to be rich or you don't have to be uh, well known or you don't have to be working and earning so much for you to have a medical aid facility, especially at a time when the government is failing decimally to manage their, uh, their facilities. Nice and individual. I have established an organization called Mona Community Development Organization. We have so far helped about 174 youth to obtain the 100,000 loan that is from the Department of Youth. And under poverty eradication, women empowerment, we have assisted 108 women. So now I take it that it's a good initiative for giving back to the Mahan Society. And annually I host a dinner to help mm. those who will be looking for transport, mm. to go for interviews, to go for this and that, mm -hmm. so that generally most of the people are, parents are poor, we assist those who want to go and write interviews, mm. to go to Havrone and other centers in Botswana. So now I call that giving back to the society at the right time. So you are that's to give you back. Thank you. What are you doing to give back right uh, I think my, uh, in my constituency, my again, it's in Bushashiwas. I've already started. Okay, I've already started. It was donated by me. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. It's a good library. It's a good Sibina. I've donated some computers. In the churches, it's a yard of for a Kiba two sire for living in the corner of Hola, but about one comes to the corner of the Kalan churches are also the organization said in the corner of Hokurisava and Sin, the Kamsuvane, but I don't want to sit down. What I've already started. Ramulis expressed that there is need for them to very briefly, this time I'll be time, when I lift up my phone, you must be done before I do my summary. Okay, um, I'll start. Um, I want to be voted in as a young person because um, I'm almost at your, I'm not very much older than you. So I want, I know what your concerns and I really believe that the current government is not addressing most of the young people's concerns because I'm totally against this internship program that the BDP has introduced. Because right now, most companies don't, don't hire people. So I even saw one advert in The Voice with, where Travel and Board was advertising looking for interns. So I believe that those things should be stopped. And you need a young person who has the, uh, that kind of experience of being thrown around.